Are you ready for the awkward intro? Yeah, man. Awkward intro. What? All right, we're fucking on. We're on. We're on. I'm looking this at the time, but like, <laughs> like, I swear he said 45 Straight seconds. Straight out of bat, you're like, 45 yeah. minutes couldn't come quicker. Fuck. But yeah, you probably noticed we've got a different different guy sitting opposite me Hello, today. Hello, people. Hello. Uh, introduce yourself to the people. I'm Ben's friend, clearly, Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, just to give you a bit of background on how we met, um, I don't know if been lucky enough to anyone that may have previously listened about work-wise of what he's done um yeah we obviously shared a mutual job and whatever we're porn stars together <laughs> i was very i was really awkward in approaching that situation because i think does he want to be outed but he, he's done it can i say just the just the funniest thing you said before we started you i was said, gonna say it, you know good I- good idea for the podcast is to have those you know like in the pornos where it says when the cowgirl scene is we need like those markers on there. And I was like, all right, man. <laughs> I don't know, just, I don't even this is, you, but. You're just letting people know what I've been doing in my spare time with that premium <laughs> subscription at home. That bras is premium, man. Sorry if my mum watches this, but. <laughs> she, she ain't watching it. She ain't I, I, watching hope, this. I hope not, but um, yeah. So when we first met, it was like in the call center. Uh, when I first met this guy, it was a bit, a bit seedy, to be honest. I don't know if you remember. You I've said it to you before, and I? <laughs> But he was like, yeah, yeah, cool. He was like, oh, yeah, I do like um, videos. I was like, oh, cool, what kind of videos? And he was like, music and whatever. And I was like, oh, nice, really interested. Got my own clothing brand. I was like, oh, this guy's cool. I was like, so what other like, type of videos you do? And he was like, oh, yeah, I do porn as well. <laughs> this is a true story as this well. Is, this is a true yeah, story. Yeah, man, I'm not just telling this for sh- you know, shits and giggles. But um, yeah, for like the whole time, like, I'm asking this guy, like, seriously, do you do porn? Like... And then he genuinely somehow convinced me like he was some kind of Ron Jeremy guy. And then he asked me, he's like, nah, like, I've got one coming up. Like, it's going to be at Jury's Inn. Like, if you want, you can actually come along. And And you considered. (laughs) You you thought about it. If I was single, I mean, who knows. The the weird thing is, imagine if I said yes, like, what would you have done? Like... Just met this guy in your job and... I would have, like, created some mad environment. I mean, like, <laughs> I would have done it like, no, like, punks back in the day. I would have booked a room in Jury's Inn and be like, yeah, we've got our male talent here, Brad. <laughs> You're too nice, man. He's, he's the hottest talent coming out of the UK right now. The hottest. He's Mr. Brazzers. <laughs> Is it Brazzers or Brazzers? I don't want to correct you again because it seems like <laughs> I've just introduced don't, myself from this guy like they think I work in the porn industry already and it's, yeah. Oh, shit, man. But no, nah, it's good to have you here, man. It's thank good to you, have man. You. Thank you. The thing is, is that people are probably wondering where Dale is. Uh, all I want to say is that Brad said, fuck Dale. This is my spot now. I did. <laughs> I'm taking over. I like, I, I said his time is done. <laughs> I mean, he's a creative guy. Just invest yourself in music. Leave this to yeah. me. And the let, podcast thing's me now. I, like, I thought by me coming on this, like, I'd get a bit of pain. Maybe be like a Boohoo Man ambassador or some shit. <laughs> Gives enough views. You know, like, Ben sold me down the river. He was like, there's a makeup artist as you turn in. And instead, I've just parked my car and literally parked my car into a fucking bush. Yeah, that's the thing. And I had so, to uh, climb out somehow. If anyone's been to... I'm not going to bait out where I live. But Brad... On his way here, bear in mind he's been to my house before, it's not like a new spot. About five times he calls me. He goes, mate, which one Which which one are you at? And I'm like, I'm not sure, you've probably seen a video, in all the videos, you see a giant blue cherry picker out of my thing. So you're, so you're like, I'm not going to tell anyone where I live, shit. Yeah. But if you look close <laughs> enough, you'll see the signpost right through the window. Okay, but no, but there's a giant blue cherry picker out of my house. So I say, Brad, opposite the giant blue cherry picker. And his words were, what's a cherry picker? Is that a restaurant or something? I mean, <laughs> it could be perceived as a restaurant or some shit. I mean, and I was like, no, it's a giant blue cherry picker. He calls me, he's like, okay, is it the X, Y, or whatever court? Nah, opposite the blue cherry picker. He then calls me, mate, I've had to park in a bush. I can't get out of my car. I'm like, Brad, just fucking park your Maneuver. car. Maneuver. Maneuver, park the other way. And then here he is. Here his, he is. his neighbors were probably thinking, is fucking Colin McRae in the car park right now. Who the fuck is revving like this? I've been driving just over a year, but the parking <laughs> situation still isn't a big improvement. It's to a be struggle. Honest. It's a struggle. It is, mate. It is. But yeah, man. But what's been happening, man? What's, what's new? What's new? Like, I'm glad you reached out to me, man. Like, fucking this whole 
I'm going to bring up again, dare I say it, but lockdown shit. Yeah, like, yeah, I think course. a lot of people become like, almost like a fucking recluse. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like me, right now my life has been fucking Pornhub subscription, like I fucking said. <laughs> and Call of Duty, man. Like, life's not been glorious. And these girls that you kind of promise a date and God knows when lockdown's done, I'm sorry, but... It's not happening. Don't hold me against it. <laughs> I'm going to be awkward and more awkward yeah, than normal, yeah. Yeah, a lot of them live too far away and you just kind of... <laughs> Any way out, man. Oh, shit. So, I just spilled my rum everywhere. I'm glad it's not me. That's not good. I, I did say as well, when I walked in this room, I was fucking extremely nervous. Like, there's wires and a whole lot of expensive looking equipment, man. And then, and then he poured alcohol. a really heavy rum and was like, I'll be all right. <laughs> Don't I worry. Did. He said, do your own measures. And I waited till he turned his back is what really happened. So, But yeah, but the, one of the reasons I was excited to get you, like, especially here, and the discussion, because you're another fan of, uh, you know, Boxing, MMA, UFC, yeah. You <laughs> you looked at me so blankly, but yeah, you're a big fan of the fight game, right? I, I think he's got the wrong person. No, you're a big fan. Is this, of, why, mate, you, is this why I'm here? You love the fight game. Yeah, no, I love the fight game. The fight game. I love the fight game. No, I do, man. There's obviously a lot going on at the minute in the UFC world. Like, I feel like UFC is getting a bit more traction now. Obviously, yeah, yeah. it was always boxing, 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 and I was a fan of UFC when there wasn't a lot going on and then obviously Conor McGregor came on the scene and everyone was like all of a sudden big UFC fans of course yeah but what like because how long have you been into UFC because I'm not gonna lie I've only known about I'm that guy who I knew about Conor McGregor yeah and then I paid attention to Conor McGregor fights and only now I'd say probably in the since this lockdown period yeah. I've started paying attention to more UFC it, it, it's a funny one because I've always been telling people to watch it like relatives friends and whatever and always like nah that, what, what's that shit like a bunch of guys hugging each other and fucking yeah Touching each other's asses, the jujitsu, by the way. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, I've been kind of trying to sell it for a while. And like I said, Conor McGregor came on the scene. There was a lot of people that obviously came over to the sport and was loving it and whatever. And I was never that kind of guy. I was like, oh, I was watching it beforehand. Obviously, there's a lot of people. It's like music, everything. There's always of the people course, that kind yeah, of get yeah. aggy. And it was never the case with me. I mean, I think the only thing that I'm not a big fan of is the kind of people that have the most ridiculous kind of I've been watching it for a week so I know more than you kind of I see look. that but that's the same time, with everything yeah. though yeah do you know what I mean I had so. to have that with boxing because I'm I think you're more of a UFC fan aren't you? I'm more of a boxing fan definitely and I had the same thing with boxing like I've, I've always been a big massive fan of boxing mm. and uh, you have these people who are like just it's the most frustrating the yeah so frustrating because they have no they like, like bloody hell yeah you see that Deontay Wilder he would have fucking banged out Muhammad Ali. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you basing that off? Nah, but you're not seeing him. He fucking sparks everyone out. Hey, son, have you seen that Mike Tyson? 57. <laughs> he's coming back. He's taking fucking Anthony Joshua, Joshua <laughs> to the fucking cleaner, yeah. son. That is, and that's it. And I'm like, yeah. do you not see how slow it's... But yeah, it's one of them Whereas I feel like it is an easy sport. You watch one main event. It is. It's a blood sport at the end of the day. And that's, that's what it used to be. But it evolved from that. It used to be a backyard kind of fighting, obviously, Kimbo and whatever. And then it went over to, I'll say UFC was around before that, correct me. But um, there was a guy called like Tank Abbott. Yeah. Like I, I mentioned to you earlier for the people who's listening and whatever, but I've been trying my best over lockdown as well to grow some fucking facial hair. Oh, fuck. Like, yeah, I'll tell the people that can't grow <laughs> real facial hair. I do yeah, feel your pain. I'm in there, I'm there. Like, there's a thing called minoxidil, which is like hair growth treatment. I've been splashing it on my muttons and nothing's Wait, happening. Are you aware? You're midway through being, yeah, blood sport, fight game. You're like, oh, and by the way, anyone who can't grow facial hair, I've got just a cure for you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> mate, but yeah, segue straight to it. It was, <laughs> mate. But, like, I tried to, like, have a bit of a trim because the bum fluff, I was thinking, I'm going to be on camera, man. I need to trim up a little bit. And I had, like, a tash. And there was a guy in the UFC called Tank Abbott, a big, fat fucking pub guy with a, like, moustache. And, yeah, he had, like, no real skills. But he was that kind of guy in the pub. I kind of built up a reputation when this guy's like, oh, this guy's fucking nails, he'd beat up anyone. And he was going in like the octagon against people that were actually in martial arts, like whether it be cry, jiu-jitsu, boxing, whatever, and yeah. just laying them out, man. Like, but of course, of, it, man. of course, over time, like things evolve yeah. with every sport and obviously he had his way out and whatever, but yeah, it's a crazy one. So who, who like, because I, again, now I started paying more attention for probably the mm. past two months. So you, you hear about this Masvidal mm. now, but he's been about for ages. I didn't. I thought he was new on the scene. Yeah, no. But he's been about for a long time. Yeah. You, and you also hear about like this John Jones. Uh, who else is there? Obviously, there's that Brock Lesnar. Uh, 
obviously Bro- could be Brock Lesnar man he was gone way back basically yeah but, but I'm just saying I hear you I who's, hear you. who's the main dude like uh, you've got the obvious ones like Conor McGregor he's retired be. now man he's retired he's he says retired. he's retired but um sorry there's, there's so many weight categories of course it's I, I couldn't say there's one guy to look out for because it's not necessarily like so many talented fighters and there's a lot of even fighters that I like to keep on the radar that fight within MMA as well from Milton Keynes man so it's yeah. nice. There's like a guy called Linton for sale. I don't know if people, of course, are aware of him. Um, there's another guy in his camp. I think it's like Tom Mertz. He's like yeah. Bellator. Oh, mate, I used to work with Tom Mertz. That's so there mad. There you go, man. That's I worked with him at Daytona. Yeah. At a little racetrack. So, and he, mate, he had a fucking appetite. I remember him. Just, he <laughs> so, used to always eat he has a twin, doesn't he? It's, yeah, he does. They're both in the fight. And I think the guy's like a bantamweight as well. Yeah. So he's like, I say low and weight. The guy's a fucking machine still, but... Um, yeah, man. Like, I, I watched him in Bellator. It's like a different, of course, yeah. company from UFC and whatever. Like I said, I'm an MMA fan in general. And um, yeah, he broke his fucking arm that night, man. But he's a great fighter. Linton as well. I yeah. watched live. Great fighter again. So it's nice to see, man. Like I yeah. said, it's, it's about... Obviously, although I don't know those people personally, but when they're from your city, you're nice. Nice, don't And you're yeah, a fan already. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's nice, man. It's nice to see. And that's the thing. I, so I, obviously, I worked with him, so I know and then when you have him on Facebook or whatever. Mm. So I, I don't, it's not like I went in where I'd be like, Tom, yeah, you are, mate. It's like, I know. Yeah, you should take it, Sam. Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> have to get fucking ringside, mate. Oh, yeah. But no, he was a lovely guy. And not only I've that. I've heard that as well. Yeah, he's a lovely yeah. guy. But it was mad because I didn't, I knew he did like martial arts when he was younger. Mm. But I don't. I didn't even clock that it was yeah, anything man. serious. And then I just started seeing him he on my Facebook. Good. He looked yeah. good from what I last seen. So yeah, yeah. fair play to the guy, man. But I suppose that segues nicely into the big one. What's the big one, man? The Talk big to me. one. The baddest man on the planet, Mike Tyson. Mike, Iron Mike versus Roy. <laughs> Roy Jones. Roy Jones, man. Is this like? I don't know if this is like good or bad. I don't. I'm. I'm really like on the fence of it. Like the whole Mike Tyson, Roy Jones. I'm happy to see it, man. And like my take on it is, I said this about I can't remember. I think there was some guys. When, when it, not, sorry to go back onto like MMA and that. Whenever these old fighters seem to get signed to Bellator, like those guys like TOTs and whatever. But the people growing up that didn't necessarily have the opportunity to see these like some of the best in the world. Yeah. For us people, it's nice to see them fight, even if it's of course not the same magnitude. It's not the same. But have you seen thing, all of the rules that are with it? It's really weird. I've not, I've not, man. So, um, so it's like an eight-round exhibition, and they're doing it. Whereas, um, if anyone gets cut, the fight's over. So anyone gets like, and it was, and the ref, I think like the commission. <laughs> so I think it's like the California Commission or whatever. Yeah. Um, okay. mate, pour yourself Sorry. another one. Awesome. Treat yourself. Um, yeah, the California Commission were like, um, if anyone starts going for anyone. Then we're stopping it. Like, if anyone starts, and I was, if anyone throws any real punches, <laughs> we're done. Yeah. So I was kind of like, what? I don't really know what it is. But yeah. then, but then you hear Mike Tyson talking, and he's like, I've only got one gear. He's still an animal. Yeah, that's what I mean. You see still him, an animal. And, but he's a different breed, that guy. But the thing is that uh, for anyone that obviously does follow follow boxing or anything like that, like Roy Jones last fought, I think, in 2018, and his punch resistance is gone. Like he's he in I'm his day. Gonna comment on that, man. Yeah, in his day, he's probably never been. They they always say there's probably been. He's the closest thing to a like like invincible fighter as has ever For been. Real? They say that. What's, he, what's what, his record? Did he have any losses? No, nah, but he had a lot of losses. That's what I mean. So he dragged his career on way past where he should have. That's what I was gonna say. Like I follow boxing briefly, but a guy went onto like a Russian kind of company or something, and he had a couple of fights there, and he lost them. Whatever. Yeah. And that was the last kind of. But that wasn't that long ago, man. Yeah, that was so like 2019 and yeah, so he like so as I said, 2018 and um, so the thing is, is that you could argue Roy Jones Jr. is the more active fight. So I think Mike Tyson was 2002 when he last fought. Fuck. So you think that's against some random big fat Irish guy? <laughs> I say that and people would crucify me. Yeah. Imagine this is yeah. a great fighter. Yeah, yeah he's gonna be like fucking fat Irish guy. What are you talking about? Oh, but yeah, that blue cherry picker tomorrow, mate. <laughs> it made me there. Someone's relative. I'm sorry. But yeah, I think it's mad. I don't know. I, I, I said I'm well torn on it because I'm like, uh, on the one hand, I think you see Mike Tyson these little snippet videos. Yeah. Don't wrong, Mike Tyson. Looks, an animal. Yeah, he looks like an animal. Still an animal. And you just think. If he lands one of them on Roy Jones, Roy Jones yeah. is like has uh, his punch resistance gone. I'm just like, was he middleweight? Roy Jones. He went he went through the weight, so he actually um, I love that one. He, he picked up he picked up a heavy like he was a he small didn't get a heavyweight. Yeah, huh? so he did. Yeah, so he was like a he was a small light heavyweight, oh, but he still heavyweight. no. But this one I mean he went through. Was it the, cru- uh, was that, no, was that called cruiserweight? Didn't exist back then. I don't think. That's crazy. But he, yeah. So he picked up a heavyweight, um, a heavyweight title. I'm, I'm, I correct. I'm, I'm sure. I say yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty certain he did. But he had. He was like a five weight 
just five looked ways. Yeah, because no, he did. He fought like John John Ruiz because it's the same guy who David Hay fought. Like uh, David Hay fought John Ruiz yeah. as well. But anyway, he he was like First back in the day just for that man. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I said, um, MMA in terms of like the weight categories. For example, a middleweight um, MMA fighter versus a boxing middleweight. The MMA has. Uh, there's quite a big bit of weight advantage over the middleweight boxers. Basically, boxers are liar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's essentially what I'm saying. So, for him to go five fucking weights, that is Mate, insane. Mate, it's crazy. When, because there's only a few fighters that have done that. So, like, I don't want to sit and list them all off. But I just yeah. think anyone that does that, they have to be a very special... Very confident very... as well, man. Mentally strong to, uh, like... Because naturally, like me, for example, like, I'm a, a bit of a stocky, chunky guy. A bit thick. You know what I mean, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, busty. Yeah, you hear curvy. what I'm saying. You hear what I'm saying. But for example, if I just go up like a, a good few weights and try to fight someone, man, I'm gonna have no cardio, and it's gonna be a mess. Obviously, yeah. those are athletes. I'm, it's a mess. Like, don't get <laughs> a mess. Don't get it twisted. Those are athletes. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, it's different gravy, yeah, man. Yeah, so I do find it crazy. Me. But I'll be, I'll be tuning in. I think it's like September 12th or whatever it is. But it's just interesting. But I'm really torn there. That's so why I wanted to yeah. hear your opinion on it because I'm just like. 50 mm. if you're early 50s in fighting still yeah i think i don't necessarily listen to mike tyson's podcast but obviously from seeing like i don't know if you've seen his do documentary film and whatever i'm just yeah. watching him in general like there wouldn't i don't think there was ever going to be a fighter like him like from his upbringing he he said as well i think someone asked him would you like to see your son in fighting he's like my son has no business in fighting his justification for it was like Listen, I had a hard upbringing. Yeah, yeah. And when you have a hard upbringing, you have to fight, man, and you have to get up from the bottom, and that's exactly the life kind of life he had. And but you know what, Conor Benson, so well. which was so interesting. Yeah. Like uh, so Nigel Benson, Conor. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, familiar you know, with him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He um he said, yeah, you're right. You yeah. you have to fight because I think someone stuck it on him, but like you're Nigel yeah. Benson, like you know nothing. Yeah. And, he, and he was like, is it more scary the fact you have to fight? You have no choice. Mm. But I'm not fucking gone in the head. I want to fight. <laughs> and he was like, so you're saying like it's a bad thing, but I was like, you fucking, yeah. you're dealing with someone who's yeah. that wired up there that I yeah. want to fucking go to war. You yeah. have to go to war. I don't have to. Yeah. I just found it interesting. Like, an 100% interest. man. Like Mike Tyson's a very, like people try to like from watching documentaries and like research, I don't say research is a strong word, but like athletes and stuff, you kind of gain a kind of perception of what they're like. That guy, there's no perception. Like the yeah. guy is unhinged he's a good guy and like i think he starts smoking a lot of weed like he's he's selling <laughs> he's, 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 he's smoking he's, a toad toady other, so he's, he's toad. got his own crop field <laughs> he sells his own he sells his own weed is it ko kush isn't it? K no yeah so sorry i'm like jumping no no that's cool it's cool uh ko kush is what is uh which is weed brand is yeah it? he's it's doing got, well from that but he talks i always see on his hotboxing podcast he says um about He's like, I smoke, smoke something called the toad. I don't know what it is or I don't understand what it is. It sounds fucked, man. Yeah, it sounds fucking weird. But um, he's like, I went there and it's like, you go on this journey. And he, he says he's never been the same I know since. what it is. I know what it is. What? I swear, please someone correct me. But in the comments somewhere. If one person is watching. I'm turning to, turn to that guy on the first podcast. I'm like, yeah. if anybody's watching, please come. Uh, guys, swipe up. Swipe up. Swipe up. <laughs> Watch your sh subscribe fresh. But, um... Fuck. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I think it's like some old Indian thing, man. I think, yeah. I think, is it, was it, did they drink it or did they put it into their bloodstream or nah, something? No, so he was saying, I think you smoke it still. I, think. Yeah. Like, I might be wrong. There might be different ways of taking it. But yeah, he was just... I've he, heard of that though. But every time he's on a podcast, like, yo, you tried, you, yeah. you smoked a toad? You smoked toad, man? I know what you're going to say. Dirty Sanchez. That's why I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> when you was younger and you saw that stupid shit, obviously jackass is inevitable. If you're a young guy, you're watching jackass. Dirty Sanchez was a bit weird, but yeah, they smoked the toad. What, so, that Dirty Sanchez? Yeah, man, I'm sure they smoked the toad, man. If, if, if anyone <laughs> smoked the toad, it was going to be those guys. That just doesn't sound cool, though, does it? It doesn't. Oh, uh, yeah, oh, I got fucking baked last night, I smoked the toad. Yeah, man. I mean, <laughs> they smoked the toad. They're, 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 oh, fucking, I'm going to sound like an idiot. Those uh, LSD and whatever, what's that type of drug you call it? Hallucinogenic, sorry. Hallucinogenic. It's hallucinogenic, yeah. Like taking LSD tabs and, and fucking, not that I've done it, by the way, but. <laughs> Mum. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but but um, yeah, like smoking a toad just doesn't sound cool, like you said, man. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't often smoke a toad. But I think I've always said as well, like when I'm older, because I like 
oh shit, I was going to incriminate myself. <laughs> well, hold on, I want to hit it like I did in my early time. Yeah, I was going to say so. <laughs> but yeah, when I'm older and I've got no responsibility and I'm just yeah. sitting in my rocking chair, everyone in my family is nice and whatever, best believe I'm probably going to smoke the toad, man. <laughs> I'm gonna try something. I'm doing mark, something. Mark my words. Yeah. I will be smoking that time. I mean, why not? You no, no, no. I always say that. I think that. I, I said, I can't remember who I was in the conversation with, but I was like, when you get to a certain age, yeah. like, that's the only time I feel like you're fully free. Now, when you've lived your life, you've done all the things you yeah. wanted to achieve, because I feel like there's always this pressure now of like, oh, I need to get my job. Yeah. I need to put money in my thing. It's the UK lifestyle, man. Yeah, but I think when you get to an age where you've kind of, you've lived your life, you've, you've completed you do, it. Basically. You've completed it and you just think, all right, the next thing left for me is death. <laughs> Sad as it sounds. Real about it, you it? just be like, I'm going to fucking smoke the toad. If, if I, <laughs> no, it's true. It's I'm going to smoke the toad. Listen, <laughs> if, if I can trip out enough where I'm just sitting in my armchair fucking dribbling and no, but I'm imagine, happy in euphoria, like that's good enough yeah, for imagine me. Imagine having a grandparent being like, I've got nothing left. I'm going to smoke the toad. <laughs> you know, imagine what? that, like you've been doing it on the regs, yeah. In, in your old fucking age home. I don't know, you, <laughs> you're getting Trevor from the cancer state to drop your toad off, yeah. And you're hitting that shit. And the carer's like, fuck, Bradley's doing the toad again in his room. Where'd you get it from? And <laughs> Bradley's doing the toad He's again. doing the toad again. You know him just once. You've done it several Repeatedly, times. Repeatedly, man. It's if okay. I can get hold of the toad. <laughs> Please, we find out where this toad comes from. Like, I don't have to travel to the I don't even know what the toad, toad is. But when you say it wasn't the same again, sorry, we didn't even touch on that. What, what do you mean? Is it no, in a so negative he, way or as in enlightenment? No, so I think like, know how he's become really spiritual and he's really yeah, like... Yeah, yeah. So Come he's put it down, yeah. yeah. But no, but he's put it down to the toad. He said that toad, he... Man. He said he... <laughs> he said, I, I, I would love to like know the clip and be yeah. able to show it to you, but he says he had a, he had a go on this... <laughs> he had a go on the toad. And, uh, and after that, it was like yeah. he went on this trip, went somewhere... And after that, he felt like he had seen stuff that he hadn't seen before. I hear you. I don't want to be the guy on a podcast, like everyone kind of touches on it, but like DMT as well. I know a lot of people like mention yeah. that. The thing is, I'm such a, when it comes to anything to do with drugs, I know fuck all. I know, I'm obviously aware of like yeah. hallucinogenics, I'm aware of like, but there's all these different like, yo, have you tried the AK-47? It'll blow your fucking brains out, and I'm like, what? That's like, what? Not, like, 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 that's not even the most rare shit. Like, I don't smoke nowadays, yeah. And again, I'm about to incriminate myself, but let's say, theoretically, if I did over lockdown out of boredom and curiosity, yeah, yeah, I would have theoretically called up my boy and be like, listen, can you get me some normal, like, when we used to smoke, it was like English, normal shit. English. Do you want some like OG Power Kush 122? <laughs> Decimal place, round it off. We've got a 12 gauge. Yeah, man. Fully loaded. <laughs> you might die. Yeah. <laughs> One pull when you're dead. Yeah, yeah like, literally. That sounds like the shit I want to smoke. Yeah. But I remember being a kid and it was like, the, the, the biggest thing you had was like cheese. It was like getting, like, I, yeah. I remember being like a 13 year old kid, like, oh, yeah. you get the cheese. And it was like, hey, yeah. yeah. I, I just find now it's, it's, now as you get older, it's you, too complex. I, I, I don't fuck never. with cheese, man. Jeez. I don't say I have like experience as of recent, but yeah. You've... Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I've never, never really been a, been a part of that lifestyle. Yeah. So can I just say one of the things that uh, that Brad asked for before we started this thing, and I've just realised it now. Me up again. Yeah. Tell him so Brad said, "Do you have any? Do you have, uh, when you do this podcast, do you have any background noise? Do you have any like noise?" I was like, <laughs> "No, no, I don't." And he goes, "Ah, oh, maybe we should put some background noise in. It'll make things flow a bit better." Yeah, man. So right now we've got. Coffee shop music, was that jazz cafe patio? Fucking my eyes are bad, but yeah. I'm just saying so right now. While we're talking right now, we're talking to anybody like yeah, the told drugs, cheese. It's like literally some jazzy hallucinogenics and cafe music. Yeah, it's like yeah, 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 go hand in hand. It's yeah. like cocaine and waffles. <laughs> cocaine and waffles. <laughs> Is that actually a thing? I, don't know, I, don't I know. think you just made it up. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. um, right, right, mate. The other thing I wanted to talk about. Sorry, cocaine. I'm sorry, but no, we're going on the waffles. I'm sorry, <laughs> we're flying over that. Cocaine and waffles, man. I mean, like, <laughs> if you smoke, if you smoke weed, like, I'm kind of assuming you'd be chilled. You know, like, oh, waffles would taste really good right now, but cocaine, you're about to be fucking headbutting the plate, like, yeah, 
Like in waffles. And that's what it's all about. Yeah, man. And that is part of the fun. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and that's why we do the toad. That's why. <laughs> that's why. Yeah, but sorry, no, the, the, no, the other thing I wanted to get onto, this the only other topic I had that I, I knew I definitely want to chat to you about was um Here comes the interrogation. Go on. Was about that porno that you never shot. No, I'm joking. Uh the uh the Kanye West shit. Kanye West, man. My guy. Like, I feel a very briefly read on it. I don't tend to indulge in social media too much nowadays. Yeah. I'm very much a kind of guy that has Instagram for about two weeks. Scroll, scroll, scroll when I'm like working from home as well. I do work very hard from home, honestly. But I'm um, not watching. But, who knows? <laughs> yeah, but, they're not watching. But if, yeah, but if like my screen time goes up and I'm like, shit, it's not healthy. With social media, I'm very much a kind of guy now that's finally got to a point where I'm very much like, if you're scrolling endlessly, make sure it's people that you're following have some kind of positivity bringing to you and people that you kind of take some kind of <laughs> substance. taking this a whole. <laughs> Is that I was not... like, no, I was like Kanye West and you're like. Yeah, I'm coming on to Kanye, man. Whatever, whatever you do. I'm coming on to Kanye. Have positivity in your life. I'm because coming on to Kanye, man. That is man. the most important thing. I'm coming on to Kanye. Okay, alright, sorry. I'm not, I'll let you that sounds sorry. weird. <laughs> I kept repeating, I'm coming on to Kanye. I'm coming I'm on Kanye. Yeah, I'm sorry. Happy. <laughs> Come on now. Come on. Alright, go on, go on, go on. Go on. Yeah, go on, go on. But go on. yeah, so I kind of try to, like, I'm constantly deleting and reinstalling, and then if I find myself kind of slipping, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck this. But, um, so yeah, I don't tend to read that too much. I, I feel for the guy. I don't know if it's uh, a police publicity stunt sorry or like genuine but i kind of briefly read it yeah but yeah i have my own opinion on it so i won't delve into it too much but of course yeah no i just, it, so. just more like because the the thing is is that i feel like everyone's split on it 50 50 where some people are saying he's mentally unwell yeah and he's and, and he's and he's they're just saying like it's not funny you shouldn't joke about it it's mm, not that's like, my take and um and then you've got some people who are saying that um He's he's actually a really fucking smart genius guy, and that he's he's had enough of storage or like storing all this information in his head that he needs to kind of tell he knows too much yeah. basically and he needs to do you know what I mean like unload. Bang on me and you me and Ben by the way have genuinely not discussed this but like yeah. exactly my opinion my opinion on it is like not to try to sound all articulate and shit but this is genuinely my input on it but you know like Van Gogh. Like cut his ear off and shit. Like I kind of, <laughs> cause someone said like made the comparison like Van Gogh and Kanye are kind of similar. Like Kanye's going crazy for his art form, and I was like, what does that mean? Like googled it, and basically Van Gogh when he was obviously doing his art and whatever, like had a clash. Not like a sound clash, obviously, with like another guy. Oh, like he, he had a war dog. Really, sound clash. Picasso was getting buried. Pop Con was getting spun <laughs> up, but um. Yeah, no, so, yeah, so he had a bit of a disagreement and, like, was so fucking indulged in his art and whatever, I kind of fell into depression, cut his ear off, obviously mental health, and Kanye is similar in a sense where it's it's hard for anyone to be kind of under the limelight, of course, I, I can't, obviously can't speak for myself, but, yeah, man, so, like, the magnitude, he already had, like, a spotlight on him, and then he got married to a fucking Kardashian, that's and it's like a guy with a mental health condition, I won't say issue, say mental health condition, to have that spotlight on you is just gonna fucking, I, don't, I can't yeah. think of the word, make so it if worse. So if he's already mentally unwell, it's, it's, all it's, those things are only gonna add to it, right? Exactly, that's, that's, that's what but I'm that's trying a, to say. This is the thing that's really, that, uh, it's heartbreaking, I'd say heartbreaking, it's just more maybe disappointing, Yeah. is um, when I was younger, I looked up to Kanye. So yeah. I, when I was a kid coming still up, do, like, yeah, still do, man. elements I do, elements I don't. But I always admired his uh, like confidence. So I always thought the fact that he, there's that whole thing, isn't it? Like, um, love yourself as much as Kanye, or find someone who loves you as much as Kanye loves yeah. Kanye, or whatever it is. But Kanye was so self confident, so adamant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm for a me. black for guy, me. man. Um, yeah, and he was so adamant of everything he did. He like believed, backed it fully, and I respected that so much. Yeah. And it got to a point where it was it went from confidence, and it went from 
do you know what I mean? It went from the whole, I believe in myself, this is my product, whatever, to being a bit deluded. So he was saying things that didn't really make sense and it was almost, um, he was ignorant or he, was, he, he didn't really believe what he was saying. It was more like for shock value. And it, I don't know where that transition happened with him. So I don't know where that, where that period happened. And now it's got to the point where is, you don't know which kind of, I, I don't, he, even on his latest song, when he's like, yeah. uh, they, they want to sign a new Kanye, they want me to be calm, yay. I call him yeah. Kanye. But it's like, I don't know which Kanye which again. There's two versions, man. There's the version that done all of his previous music and probably still does his music as to now. Um, but he's still the kind of humble, down to earth guy. I sound like a nerd personally, man, but yeah, he's still a good guy, man, from. I don't know if a lot of people know the background of his story and whatever, and like all the funny history, like of him meeting up with Jay Z. Like when he first met Jay Z, he was standing in the studio, like I'm gonna be a fucking star and and whatever. Um, so there's still that part, but I think there's the the second part that people perceive as negative, and I'm genuinely still very much a fan because I'm not like oh fuck this guy is too confident, blah blah blah. Basically, people have got to try to understand like his mental state and the aspect yeah, where. Hundred percent. He's found so much fame. He's done. He's been so successful in music, and then it's like, okay, where do I go from here, man? And it's like, I found my cloven line. Okay, that's great. And don't get me wrong, he says some controversial shit along the way, as always. <laughs> and from bipolar, it's heightening these emotions. So he's gone from, I'm a musician, I'm doing well, I'm obsessed, and I need to do better. Okay, I do a cloven brand. Okay, I need to do better. And now he's found himself trying to be the fucking president. Yeah. So this, these are things that I people need to understand. Like this is, this is mental health, man. This isn't necessarily a guy just being a dick. But for all I know, imagine if the guy wasn't bipolar because he's famous and. There's, but that's you know, the problem. It's because of the way he acts. But everything you just said is bang, literally bang yeah, on. That's my is that you wanna you wanna have that. Um, isn't you want to see, obsession yeah, you want to see the thing, human man. in them. You want to see the human in them. Be yeah. like, he's bipolar. He's put on this like pedestal where everyone's watching him, and he is a. Ge I genuinely think he's a modern day genius. Mm. I think in years 100%. to come, his whole thing and what he's done is incredible. Like whether you obviously along the way he's fucked up, but who who hasn't? Like, do you know what I mean all of the all of the greatest minds have done weird things and done Definitely. messed up things? So I find it really hard of him to find the line of where. He's human, like so. He has bipolar, he has a mental yeah. condition, and all of this stuff. And you're like, I completely understand that. I want to be like, I want to be conscious of that. But on the same token, you're saying a lot of very crazy stuff at the moment. Yeah, and it's... I mean, like I said, I didn't dive into too much what was said, but I know you mentioned about he almost killed his daughter from abortion. So it's like certain things you don't mention in public man there's like you don't it's, touch it's on him crying on yeah, stage you, saying it as well yeah but i don't see any issue with crying like there's certain things you don't touch on there's religion there's obviously sexuality and i can't think of the other one <laughs> <laughs> I, I live my life by three soul things yeah religion sexuality and the last one i don't know there's, there's a third somewhere there's a third somewhere i would have found the third if i wasn't drinking morgan's honestly i promise you that was ready to be such a deep moment it was it was gonna be it was gonna be so special man but um yeah, go, go. fuck yeah let me find my trail of thought again but <laughs> you were talking about um his uh him saying that he was nearly a boy yeah sorry so like I think there's a stigma with guys crying, man, and I don't think it should necessarily be like, oh, this guy's fucking crying, what a mess, rah, rah, rah. And I know that's not what you're saying, don't get me wrong. Yeah, but, but I think... he, he's mentally not well as it is, yeah? And he's f fucking clearly passionate about everything that he puts his stamp on, especially this, because his emotions are heightened to fucking 110%, so... Yeah, but what I mean is, is it, but him, him crying isn't a problem, but being out of control of your emotions... Is, yeah, that's, that, that's the help. problem. Yeah, that's he what I mean. Help. And I just think that I, I said I love Kanye West. I think yeah. that he's he acts up. He does all this crazy stuff, and it's it's heartbreaking. And I don't like seeing it personally because I, I said I grew up knowing yeah. him as the confident guy who, of course, um, he's still like, backed guy, himself. Man. Yeah, backed himself among guy. like against everything. Like when no one wanted him to be a rapper, yeah. he managed to become a rapper. Like so, it, yeah. yeah, like for me personally, like I, I think probably ninety percent of people would have kind of encountered mental health whether it was them personally or friends family or whatever man so i've seen encounter it myself i understand that the reason why i'm not like oh kanye like nah he's not the same guy anymore is because 
people go through shit, man. It's as yeah. simple as that. Whether you're a celebrity, a normal person, it's, it's bound to happen. And like I said, he's under the spotlight, so these things are heightened, man. So, like, it's funny we're, we're here, like, talking about this. Obviously, no one, like, if his fucking stature is going to hear about it, so it's kind of like crazy because we don't know what's going on behind closed doors with him and like his relationships with of like course, family yeah, and friends yeah, and yeah but i think that's a problem I, I think i spoke about this the other week where i was saying when you're a celebrity or you're in the spotlight mm. people don't know what's really yeah people on, don't man. know people don't know what's going on and yeah. this um yeah it's tough man it's tough but um that was a very deep subject so let's it stay. was <laughs> i'm sorry like it's the rum yeah. it's fueled me on <laughs> And he, he said, Bradley, I invited you here because I hope, hopefully you bring a bit of I want to talk about a fight game. I want to talk about a fight. No, I'm joking. We, we touched that. But no, like, um, Let's talk about the, other, the other thing, the other thing I wanted to talk about was, um, so I got a message from you the other day and, uh, <laughs> it's like, what's it going to be for now? Like, what's next? Uh, the other day you messaged me and you were like, Ben, have you heard the Streets new album? And I said, no, nah, I haven't heard it yet. And you are like, He's stealing a living. What is he doing? Mike Skinner is a chief. You were like, yeah, well, I won't say that. Yeah, and you, yeah. <laughs> those were not my words. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you defend yourself. But listen, like, no, but you said you. Uh, so I haven't heard it yet. I'll be honest. I haven't listened to Mike Skinner's yeah. new album. I heard, um, I heard the. Uh, he did a video for it. The hard times freestyle, whatever it was. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's like difficult times, difficult rain. I'm sorry, I'll be very honest. I know you listen to it once, but. <laughs> Why you got out me like that for? <laughs> let's, let's just keep it I was gonna tell let's the people that I got yeah. fucking done background checks on him and. No, but it was just, and... all it means I heard one thing. Yeah, him, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't say he's still and living. I say that in jest, of course, man. I'd never throw shade and, and shit on people like that. I was trying to. Who do you hate more, Mike Skinner or Dale May? <laughs> oh, your, your, boy, your boy is good, man. We can. T I'd like to touch on Big music, obviously, after this and whatever. So yeah, it'd be nice. But um, Mike Skinner is from a historical man. Like, I don't want to say he's a genius because that's a very strong term. I think you have to be. Whew, yeah, I don't think he's genius, there. but he's very he's sick. A genius. But uh, I'm. I'm not going to even try to ring off the bangers. But his associations and collaborations with people of the likes of. Kano and the stuff he's done like blinded by the lights and there's so much more man like I'm not going to try to individually but the point I'm making is you know remix, he's brilliant man. Pranging out remix or, he's yeah. brilliant I think what UK music it doesn't need because I feel like it's already there like, like I said I like touching that with you but it's to kind of be a bit um, innovative in a sense where we don't need to like differentiate ourselves from the US don't get me wrong because I feel like we're already doing that and he was a kind of aspect back then in that time frame, what he was doing, he's filling the void. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of different. He was like a geezer, but like rapping. So like people that like aren't necessarily from the streets or whatever, of course associate with that guy a bit more and whatever. And um, his music was good. But when I heard the album, <laughs> I fucking hated it. <laughs> it was the worst thing I've ever heard. But, yeah, I did say but like that. Didn't I? Yeah, but um, yeah, that was that was a big but. Yeah, well, a big but. But personally, it wasn't the same Mike Skinner, and I mean that respectfully. But it wasn't the same caliber of work, man. Like lyrically, don't get me wrong, he's never going to be a fucking Eminem. Yeah. And I wasn't looking for that, but I was looking at some kind of art form. And I was what what I said to you was. There's kind of these niche artists where we'll try to kind of, not purposely stand out, but find their own style and do what works for them. And that's great, man. Like, I respect that fully, but I try to, like, analyze it like that. Like, is he just trying to step into that lane again like he used to do? But, but do you know what I find interesting is that I always I always think this, when, when artists are uh, further down their route or whatever, yeah. you always question if... Uh, you give some people yeah. like a, a bit of slack because they're like an established artist, they're yeah. a legend, and which Mike Skinner is. So I'm not gonna. He is. Hats off to that man. His album, so I haven't listened to it yet, so this mm. is like, I have no idea if his album's good or bad, but it's, from what you said of it, I, I'm not gonna bother. Yeah, it may, be but, a, it may be a controversial statement, man, but like touching on what you just said about artists as they get older, obviously it's like fucking across the world but Snoop Dogg for example that guy is old man like and he crossed it you know, what was it what was that fucking song when he released it was like a proper the Just Eat the Just Eat advert not the Just Eat advert <laughs> put, res Jay, put respect on Snoop's name man oh, I'm talking about um, sexual seduction that was that was fucking ages ago yeah but the point I'm making is no one fucking saw that coming did they <laughs> 
<laughs> if Mike done a bit of sexual what? seduction. I'm, I'm imagine me saying, hey? Wait, hey? guess what I see coming? Snoop Dogg's sexual seduction. Done. <laughs> no, the guy was like in a fucking robe in a big circular <laughs> bed, like just lounging out, like this. Yeah, yeah, no, I hear. Double G. But all the point is that if you if you heard an artist, so you give them some slack, yeah. uh, give them some like whatever, because they're an established, they're a legend, all these different mm. things. But if you heard, so you didn't know anything about Mike Skinner, yeah, or Snoop Dogg, and if you're giving an example, yeah, you didn't no, know yeah. anything about that artist, yeah. you didn't know anything about him, but you just heard that. Fresh off the bat, like yeah. do you know what I mean, you just that's the first thing you heard. Would you rate it? And that's the thing that I always find so interesting, is yeah. because realistically, like the 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 past few things I've heard from from the streets, not a mm. much, but hasn't really been. Yeah, been a few bits. There's been bits and pieces that I've liked, but not exactly a lot. that. And he was gonna come to visit our city. I don't know. Our, our our city was, he was going to come I, I, listen mate I'm saying it because you fucking pointed out the cherry <laughs> picker it, Milton Keynes there's, people, Milton there's Keynes. gonna be people on route as soon as you upload this <laughs> yeah. cherry picker yeah. on point yeah, Mike me. Tyson yeah but um yeah he was gonna come visit Milton Keynes I was like oh it's the streets it's the streets and obviously it was at the same time his new album came out and to be honest I wasn't trying to hear his new album yeah, yeah. so I was like yeah I'm not, I'm not gonna do it I haven't had anyone say like for the record I haven't seen anyone say it's good but yeah. you're probably the only person who had it. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, I may yeah. be wrong in other people's view, but that's that's my that's my feel on it, man. Yeah, yeah. But in, as a whole, and uh, just to kind of conclude on this, like UK music, I don't know. Like, I'm I'm very conflicted in my opinion on it, but I'd love to know what your thoughts are in terms of like UK music, music right now. So obviously, you've got a bunch of different genres. That's what I mean. You've kind of got the like Afro Bashment. You've got yeah. the grime. You got hip hop. You've got like a real mix, do you know what I mean? A real mix, but you, but coming from the UK is my yeah. point. So what's your feeling, if you have one, you might just be like, I'm neutral to it, <laughs> I don't know, but like UK music, yeah, how... I, I, I mentioned to you before, I'm being very honest, I'm, I don't necessarily listen to Afro Bashment too much. No, I don't gonna, either. No, I'm not going to talk shit like, yeah, man, this guy, that guy, it's, it's not something I listen to. But um, I, I feel like I mentioned not to repeat the same word, but we're being very innovative in terms of the music that we're bringing out is different to like US rap and what I mean by that like I said um, respect to your boy Dale um, it, that, that, that kind of rap style is different man it, it, it's like it doesn't necessarily have to be put into a genre but if I did put it into a genre it'd be like UK rap like indie music I don't think indie is the correct term like forgive but no, me but I mean, it's, like, but, it's like always like tying in a different genre yeah, into and, one yeah. and like I'm not necessarily saying the same aspects in, in, in the kind of uh, music that they put out but like your lo loyal corners and yeah there's a bunch yeah. of uh, uh, that's, that's similar something. kind of 100% genre. and I think there is a bunch of artists and I know you mentioned Dale not of big up Dale's every time yeah. I know we make jokes about him but now nah, big up Dale every time because I think there is a bunch of artists who are it's a got, niche man yeah they find their niche music. sound and I think it's um I think it's difficult, especially now with the music industry, is that there's a lot of like, and I hate, I hate, 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 I can't even say, hate with an exclamation mark, yeah. capital H, like all of the, the same sound in yeah. typical. I like, I respect what they're doing and I know you, you hate it. I wouldn't say I hate it, I'm not a fan no, of it. No, you hate it. <laughs> but they're doing it because it's a, it's a way out, you know, like going back to like the genre, like I said, your boy Dale and the Loyal Carners and furthermore i'm not going to try to start trying to list off names but um like like i said man my screen time on my phone's ridiculous but you you find like the snapchat like random videos and whatever on yeah. your time on your board and you look at them and i find several nowadays that people listen to like people like i said loyal Connor and whatever and you're like oh shit and then like i've got a friend like a female friend who's like canadian and when i'm chilling with her like, i'm listening to loyal Connor and whatever and she's like Oh, this guy's great. Who's this guy? Right, right. So yeah. I definitely feel like I can't necessarily put my hand on my heart and say, look, it's going to take off. But I feel like what we're doing, even if it is just for the UK and even if it is just for us, there's definitely appreciation there for that type of music. And I think, yeah, man. Yeah. Well, no, be. I think it's exciting times definitely for UK music. Yeah. And I think that segues nicely into Song of the, song of the Week, is it? I don't song even know you call it Song of the Week. week. I don't know, this ain't even got a name at the moment, but... Um, we'll let you roll first. Roll first, man. So, give me an intro into your song. 
Yeah, I try not to waffle on it about a bit too much, but I wanted to touch on it earlier in a podcast. Um, obviously, the reason why I'm friends with Ben, this is going to sound a bit deep, forgive me. Because I love him. Yeah, no, he but <laughs> when we met him, we got to kind of get along and whatever, and I was like, hats off, this guy works hard for what he does, man. But not only that, he's a genuine good friend. Do you know what I mean? It's hard to come across, man. So when you see people around you, even if it's people that you're not necessarily still in touch with, or you grew up when you were younger, when you see those people doing well, man, it's a, it's a brilliant thing. I mean, some people have a kind of neg negative outlook, where they're like, oh, I wish I was there, but it's not the outlook to have. So I'm going off on a tangent a bit, but the point I'm making is, um, my song of the week, I wanted to put people on, if they're not really familiar with the guy, is a guy by the name of Park Hill. Um, he used to live local to us as well. He used to be in a group called IMP Batch. Um, I think he used to go by the name of Docs Man. I think that's what his name used to be. Yeah, yeah his name's Park Hill now. He does some great stuff. Um, he produces for the likes of Little Dirk, um, even Wale, and I think Future as well, man. So he's doing some great things. Although there's no affiliation there, of course, anymore. I used to be very good friends with his younger brother growing up. Um, used to stay around the house. Mum was a great woman and whatever. He used to look after me a bit and whatever. And I remember seeing him recording stuff with his with his friends with like mattresses around the microphones and whatever. So now when I hear the stuff he's putting out with like people, not like I even need to drop names because his music stands alone is great. But like with M Huncho and whatever, and like I said, the stuff yeah. that he's producing. I think he lives over in the States now, but he's, he's doing bits, man. So I feel like if he had a little bit of limelight, I really think his music could go places. So. My song of the week is Park Hill, and the song is called Ring My Lion. Big up, man. And big up Machine Man Tim, because IMP Batch was... Oh yeah, of course, yeah, I should boy, man. Every yeah, time, man. Every time. Before you live like a king, gotta work like a slave. Oh, you do a grind, try to say. Don't you know there's money to be made? Right outside where we stay I told the client to help me rate I was out your bucket sales every day I put the work on the scales, it's heavyweight No stole, so we used to make a way See, I was out here taking risks Posted with my killers in the six Took a trip out of town, I ain't that shit Came back with a kettle on my wrist, yeah Remember them days when no food up on my plate, yeah that dirty get okay from the estate, yeah, yeah. Dog, I had to track to escape, yeah, yeah. Take the sample, go and tell your mate. Tell him, ring my line. 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 I got that three for 25. See, I lost couple niggas, they ain't heaven. Free all my niggas, they got sense. I posted with my niggas in the seventh. Free all my niggas, they go sense, man. In the state, I want me in all these packs, yeah. And I got a lot on my back, yeah. In the studio for these tracks, yeah. And these tracks, they making me these racks, yeah. I tell her, ring my line. I used to tell her, ring my line. And I used to sell two and two. Now it's big money when you book and few, few more steps. Remember them days when no food up on my plate, yeah. That dirty get okay from the estate, yeah, yeah. Dog had to track to escape, yeah, yeah. Take the sample, go and tell your mate. Tell him, ring my line. 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 I got that three for 25. Took a trip to OT, ain't coming back home. Till I build a contact list on his trap phone. Them trips down the M1, they were mad low. Gotta re up on that light, got a patch gone. In my grandma's kitchen with the blade. Got to know where each is getting shit. Ain't proud of myself, but I gotta get paid. Being broke nearly drove me insane. See, I was out here taking risks. Posted with my killers in the six. Took a trip out of town, I ain't that shit. Came back with a cattle on my wrist, yeah. Remember them days when no food up on my plate, yeah. How's that dirty get okay from the estate, yeah, yeah Dog had to track to escape, yeah, yeah Take the sample, go and tell your mate Tell him, ring my line 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 I got that three for 25 
I don't even know who Park Hill is. This is, no, we're back now, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at you and you were hand over there, like, yeah. Yeah, man. No. I couldn't, again, man, warn yeah. me. If I'm yeah. about to incriminate myself. No, 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 that's all right. But no, we, yeah, after the song, we come back, we come back. But, um, but no, so I don't, I don't know who Park Hill is. I've never heard of him. I know of an IMP batch, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, like, like I said, I completely forgot, obviously. You, you, you're friends with um, what you call what you call him, Tim? Sorry, Machine Man Tim. Machine Man Tim. Yeah, yeah. I think it, was, it used to be F Tizzle back in the day. F Tizzle, yeah. This guy yeah, is yeah. like we used to follow the music, obviously, like I said, because I was friends with the brothers and whatever. Those guys like Breezy. There was a lot of fucking back then in terms of grime music when grime was big, yeah. man. They were, they were talented guys, so it's it's great to see. Nah, and that, that's people cool. going on to further things. Nah, so. nah. And I love the fact that you brought that because as I said I don't know who like. I probably am aware of yeah. him, but I didn't know Park Hill was if it, doing it. If he gets one more fan, man, that's, that's yeah, it's sick, it, man. Yeah, yeah, I've got a lot of time for that. I've got a lot of time for that. So, yeah, big up Park Hill, big up Machine Man. Respect, Tim. man. Um, right, so my song is a little bit different. I, I would love to be like, yes, and a Milton Keynes bread, man. Why, <laughs> I've got why, why, more, you, the way you said that was like you were swinging your dick in the air. Yeah, man. why? You know, big <laughs> swing. Real my song. Real my song. Swing. Yeah, exactly. Swing. But nah, uh, so. I've been well into, I, 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 we've not had this conversation, but I've been yeah. well into spoken word at the moment. And um, there's a guy called, I, I have about five songs I want to play, but I mostly can only play one. And, uh, Tough time, sir. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And um, the song I want to play is by a guy called Sully Breaks. Um, so he's someone who, he don't, he's not even like a music artist. It's so weird. He's not a music artist. He posts so irregular. And it's not like a polished product. It's really fucking like I don't want to say weird, but it's really like spontaneous and whatever. Um, and I only discovered him recently, and he is sick. Like I just love everything he touched, touched on. But everyone would have heard of him. So if you, I don't know if you remember the um, he did um, what was it? An exam result won't decide my fate. I don't know if you ever remember this I one. I don't. No, nah, but I, I'm, I don't. if you don't, I'm sure a lot of people will. But yeah. it's, the, all two people that are listening. <laughs> respect but, to the people that are yeah, listening yeah 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 right? 100% but, um, thank you but no Sully Breaks is sick and uh, I've just come across all of his like past projects and everything so this one's like quite an older one it's called Me and the Mandem um, it's kind of like a song but spoken word and I fucking love it when you say spoken word sorry is that is, what's like kind of like poetry but oh, like it's, it's over okay, like it's over, obviously over beats it's over beats and stuff but it's more like George, it's not a George song. the poet. George Poe. Yeah, Sorry to make that yeah, comparison, yeah. but yeah. No, yeah, that's, that, but that same sort of vibe. So yeah. I love George Poe as well. But yeah, Sully Breaks is uh, someone who's been about for years and years and years, and I think this song's like six years old. But it's called Me and the Mandem, and he gives a very good like perspective on life, just life in general. Yeah, yeah. So it's nice, man. I'm gonna roll out. We'll end on this song, so we're not gonna talk again after this. So this will be the final song of the night. Sully Breaks. It's been lovely. Me and the man then. Brad, it's Thank been a pleasure, you. my friend. It's been an absolute pleasure. Let's roll out with this one. I fucking love this song, man. Old school ting with the papers rustling. This one's a bit different, but... It's stories. It's stories of reality and all that. I remember I wanted to look like them man Walk like them man Talk like them man But them man wanted to be like us man I remember I wanted to look like them man I wanted to walk like them man I wanted to talk like them man But them man wanna be like us man When would they realise? Cause I used to say we should build businesses And they'd say yeah we can get things with it I'd say fam let's stop being hypocrites They'd say what you're not trying to get rich with it I'd say we should get legit with this and they'd say Let's try not to get shifted But don't get it twisted That's just me and the man them That's just me and the man them I'd say we have potential and they'd say yeah I hear that But when it was time to get shit done Apparently everything I suggested was dead So they'd all ghost They talk so much but never any action My dogs barked But I guess the canines are their insecurities Never allowed them to sink their teeth long enough into anything worthwhile Things would have been much more healthier for them But I still love them cause that's just me and the man them That's just me and the man them Cause I wanted to look like them man I wanted to walk like them man I wanted to talk like them man But them man wanted to be like us man They wanted to be like us man Cause Remy taught me how to talk to things G's the reason I don't have a stab wound in my back 
When daddy wasn't around, that collective group of troublemakers was the only father I had. Young boys trying to teach each other how to be men, so I meant it literally every time I said fam. The hood was the womb we shared, so I meant it literally every time I said bro. That's just me and the man, them. That's just me and the man, them. That's just me and the man, them. So that's just me and the man them. That's just me and the man them. So now it feels like I'm losing her. I still see her hair in buns, twirling consistently as she reminded me to only refer to her with the word princess preceding her name. 29 years later, she's still searching for a prince to slay her dragons. All these years I studied my craft, feeling like a failure. Sometimes I wish I wrote fairy tales. Sometimes I wish I wrote happy endings Cause every time we speak The chords of my heroism sound slightly more out of tune over the phone line Have you ever wanted to help someone so bad that you find yourself cutting your chat short Just so your emotions don't bleed over into the silences Constantly reminded of my failures by the scars of our conversations But that's just me and the man them That's just she and the girl them That's just me and the man them so now I feel like I'm losing him I remember when these gun fingers were just innocent gestures We squeezed to acknowledge our community like What you saying fam? Squeeze to acknowledge our bliss Now with them same fingers he's clinging on to life It's like he squeezed too hard on the trigger of his ignorance And you know that kick back into reality is a motherfucker So when he tells me that he's broke I wanna say nah cause you're broken And notes with the queen's faces and then make terrible plasters if I don't give it to him, then they will And if they do, then he does what they will And I know that he don't want to like they don't But if they do, then he must Cause he lives like we do But they've done what they could And we've done what they couldn't So he's torn between what he needs And what he shouldn't So I feel like I'm losing him Have you ever wanted to help someone so bad That you find yourself cutting your chat short Just so your emotions don't bleed over into the silences Constantly reminded of my failures by the scars of our conversations. But I guess that's just me and the man them. I guess that's just me and the man them. Me and the man them. Bro, episode one. Easy, Big nice Brad. Nice one. That's it, man. That's it. We're done. I was about, yo, I was about to fucking raise the toast, man. Jeez. Raise the glass, man. Raise the glass. We're done, man. Man, talk like them, man. Talk like them, man. Till I realise them, man, want to be like us, man.